Hey friends, welcome back to Lo-Fi Let's Play. This is Lee Alexander. Thanks to the generous backing of our friends on Patreon, I'm able to bring you all new episodes of our uh, vintage gaming Let's Play series. Um, we're with the Apple IIe again, uh, using Apple II Plus emulator. Um, I like to switch versions of uh, Windows Apple emulators, and we've got something special for you today from Penguin Software 1983. Um, the designer of this game is, uh, oh gosh, look at this heart, by the way. Before we continue, look at the animated dragon flames. Sorry about the strobe effects here, friends, for those who are sensitive to flashing lights. Promise there won't be any more in the game today, but we have this fabulous scantily clad hero, this maiden that he seems to be protecting, and this dapper penguin in a top hat um, representing the publisher. Penguin Software. The designer of this game is one Mr. Dallas Snell, who uh, has the unique distinction of going on to co-found Origin, Sim Origin Systems <laughs> with Mr. Richard Garriott. So um, Dallas Snell is a great veteran of the games industry, and as far as I understand, this was the first game that he designed. So uh, let the quest begin. We uh, are starting off in this really amazing throne room. As you can see here, now the stage is set. Let the quest be told. We have a uh, a kneeling supplicant, a bored man wielding something or other, uh, a giant warrior and uh, his clinging sort of maiden friend, a, a royal woman, and uh, someone who looks like a king. I think this art is fabulous. And uh, one interesting thing about this game is that um, initially the graphics were considered too adult and uh, the developers were asked to tone it down. Um, I learned this from reading the Penguin Software slash Polarware archive. Um, uh, but actually this was the only Penguin Software game to be reviewed in Playboy magazine, uh, if my information is correct. And so I guess maybe there are some media benefits for putting scantily clad people in your games uh, in this manner. So the stage is set. There's a lot of text here, friends, but Hopefully, if I read it to you, uh, you won't find it too boring. Uh, our story is of a time long ago and a place far away. It's a tale of kings and knights and sorcerers and dragons. A tale that is never repeated, no matter how often it is told. A tale that you, my friend, shall determine how it is to unfold. Wow, friends, that's practically Shakespearean, isn't it? Your story begins in the kingdom of Belema. King Galt has granted an audience to a young noblewoman from a southwestern province. Uh, the king is seated upon the throne, so now it's, it's beginning to explain some of the people that we saw in that fabulous artwork. Uh, his favorite mistress is by his side. Gorn, the king's champion, lounges arrogantly by the king's other side. Being a mere advisor and a new one at that, you take your place among the other court nobles and listen with interest to the discussion in progress. The king says, rise, Lady Diana. You can talk much better without the palace floor marring your knees. I agree. Um, uh, you were saying, so Diana says, please forgive my people, my lord, for it is not their fault. They cannot pay their taxes this season. Wow, um, I wonder if I can take a page out of Lady Diana's strategy book. Uh, being a freelancer is quite difficult, friends. Our lands lay in ruin, our harvests are burned, and our villages ravages, ravaged. And the king asks uh, the cause of the calamity. It is a dragon, a demon spawned nightmare from the depths of hell. My people can hardly feed myself. She begs for mercy. I offer myself. Wow, saucy, uh, in exchange for mercy. The king says, be gone with you, Lady Diana. Back to your people. I need you not. And tell your people that Gorn, the king's champion, will soon be on his way to rid my kingdom of this hellbred thorn. So even though... King Galt is saucy uh, and a bit thirsty. He, he does have the best interest of his people at heart. Um, turns and hands Gorn a bag of gold. Take this gold and outfit yourself uh, for the quest and take yon new advisor. That's us, friends. Heed his word closely. He comes with the highest recommendation. Uh, now be off. Gorn glares in our direction and says, And your finest suggestion most revered advisor. Now, from the, from the get-go, this is a really cool premise. Um, it's only 1983, and already Mr. Dallas Snell, the designer, has conceived of the parser as a sort of physical champion, a, a, a physical warrior with a sword that we, the 
uh, new and unproven advisor will be forced to communicate with. And now, most adventure games of the 1980s, so let's look again at this wonderful illustration. Here's the king, here's his favorite mistress, here's Lady Diana, here's Gorn, and apparently some lady that likes to hang out with Gorn, and maybe this is us, the... Uh, Yon new advisor. Uh, but I've, I often speak when we do Lo Fi Let's Plays about the fact that um, we're in a battle of wits with a, a blunt and crude parser. And the great innovation that I think this game, The Quest, copyright 1983 Penguin Software, has done is that it has, it has pers personified the parser as a kind of um, a different person from us, a person who has different strengths than us, and a person that we will probably need to figure out how to get along with. I think that's quite clever. So when you press enter, the image tends to go away. You can read any sort of historical texts. And up top, we see this white bar that volunteers us visible exits. And where appropriate, it will um, volunteer us visible items. Because this parser is extremely crude, um, there's not even a lot of look or talk um, or other commands available, or where, or other things that we might see uh, in appropriate contemporaries. Uh, you, being able to see what is visible and what is possible um, really gives us um, some ideal constraints and we know what we can and can't do. Gorn turns quickly and leaves through the heavy oak door in the north wall. Hurrying behind him, you get your first close-up view of the king's champion. He's huge, best stay on his good side. And again, knowing that Gorn is a sort of personification of this game's text parser makes the physical descriptions and uh, his actions and his language and his personality that much more charming, doesn't it, friends? After a quick circuit through the maze-like castle halls, you finally reach the Provisioners. There is a list fastened to the countertop. The Provisioner says, Hail, Gorn, what can I do for ye today? Obviously, the... Provision, the Provisioner knows Gorn, but uh, we're persona non grata to him. But we can ask Gorn to read the price list. Uh, so here are all the supplies that any intrepid adventurer might desire, uh, and what they cost. And if we were to ask for our inventory, which, friends, I always recommend, a good starting move, any adventure game, is to find out what, if anything, you already come equipped with. The king has given us 150 gold sovereigns. I think that's pretty generous. Uh, that's surely enough to buy all. Slow it down. I can't keep the ticket straight. So uh, the game is going to ask us to purchase our provisions one item at a time um, by cartograph, which is, of course, a map. Please bear with me as there's a lot of things here, and I find it sometimes difficult to talk and type uh, different words at the same time. We're going to buy a water skin, which is going to be crucial to our adventure. So now, uh, there's a lot of interesting design reasons why the game might require us to um, <laughs> buy the things one item at a time. Uh, buy a lantern, buy an oil skin. Uh, for one, it sort of helps us internalize each item that there is uh, and account for it specifically. Um, you know, honestly... Um, it's probably due to technology limitations more than design decisions, but um, let's just pretend that having to physically buy each of these things one item at a time um, helps us internalize exactly what it is we own. Now, because uh, games in the early 80s, uh, again, this is 1983, I was two years old when this came out, um, because they're so crude, a lot of the... Um, most sophisticated puzzles. Let's see if there's anything left. We've got everything. Cool. Um, some some of the most sophisticated puzzles. Let's head north away from the provision provisioners. Um, some of the more sophisticated puzzles were about inventory management, about map making, about understanding the items that you had, um, and the precise allocation of resources. A lot of these games would not be forgiving uh, if you used the wrong item in the wrong place at the wrong time, or if you entered certain areas um, without the right item. So here we are in front of the castle. Uh, one of the main reasons I wanted to show you friends this game is that because the art was so ahead of this its time, this game is only about two years on from Escape from Rungastan, which uh, you and I played together last week, which had incredibly crude stick figures. And yet here we have this sort of amazing portraiture 
um, a large time-worn castle, surrounded by a stagnant, stench-ridden moat, stands just to the south. The road continues north to the horizon. So let, let's continue north, friends. Um, so as we set off on our adventure, um, why don't we try, uh, so the road continues endlessly, or so it seems, to the north. Far to the south, the hazy outline of castle spires rise above the landscape. Now this game, the quest, is quite prosaic, isn't it? Relative to the terseness of some of the games that we often play here on Lo-Fi Let's Play, I find this one kind of poignant and lavish. Let's read our map, our cartograph. And this is one of my favorite computer game maps ever. <laughs> Look at it rendering slowly. Um, and we see uh, a lot of the roads and the ways that they fit together. We see something that looks like a forest. We see um, three unidentifiable kind of orange spots with stick figures at it. Um, at the minute, we don't really know what any of this means, do we? Um, but the beautiful thing about this game is that the more you traverse um, this world and its, and, and its uh, kind of geography and the way that the pieces kind of stick together, the more this map will, I promise, start to make, make sense and, and be useful. Um, so let's head onward, friends, through these beautiful um, cloud-dotted skies and tree-lined meadows. Immediately we come to an intersection with roads leading north, south, east, and west. Let's head west first, friends. Um, this game has a sequel called Ring Quest, which is even more kind of uh, character-laden and uh, visually rich than this one. Uh, but I didn't actually get to play an emulation of the quest until later in life. I didn't own it as a child. Uh, so you and me and Gorn are kind of traveling. And uh, there are some automatic things that Gorn will do. Um, let's try to talk. <laughs> Gorn will reply, unlike a certain advisor, the royal champion is not famous for an elevated level of verbal proficiency. And isn't that a fun thing for your uh, AI companion slash parser, parser stand-in to say to you? Um, it's uh, kind of... As I often talk about the way that um, parsers make fun of the player or intentionally frustrate or mock the player. And uh, I like this, that um, it teases you here for the very thing that you're meant to be good at. Um, Hermit's Cave, keep out. Um, road winds gently through rolling hills. We can read the sign. <laughs> Gorn says, what's the matter? Art thou blind? Because we can clearly read it. Uh, let's head this way. Uh, so you see what Gorn has done just now. He's drank from a flask. Uh, one of the few time mechanics in this game is that we our water skin is limited. And um, if we are to strand Gorn without a source of water, we can get a game over. So one of the things we have to be conscientious of, of is how often Gorn drinks the water and uh, whether he reports that it is empty. Um, we'll need to be beside bodies of fresh water at that point to fill the water skin. Um, the road narrows to a path until it ends abruptly at a mouth of a cave. Uh, if we look at the visible exits, we can see that east is probably a safe bet should we want to enter the cave. <laughs> look at this wonderful illustration of this beautiful uh, medieval hermit. A small old man stops you at the cave entrance. That's far enough. What business have ye here? Give one gold. Beware neighboring kingdoms. So it looks like at certain levels of uh, payment, the hermit will give us different hints. Uh, let's just give gold. Treasure abounds on the southern islands. I wonder how much gold we've given. Ha! Huh. Dragons can be caught if one approaches close enough to pour salt on their tails. So it looks like this is a, you could pay the hermit for some hints. Um, I'm going to hang on to our sovereigns for now, friends. Uh, because I'm hoping that we can use our adventuring skills to replace the hermit's advisory capacity. But uh, it's a good start being able to meet someone who wants to give us advice, don't you think, friends? So um, let's continue on. Um, most of the areas in this game are sort of uh, blue skies and meadow paths like this. Um, Gorn points to the deep impressions left in the ground by his boots, water is slowly seeping up into them. So again, if you sort of learn the language of adventure games, um, you start to look for appropriate signals in the prose. Obviously, there is a body of water near us, but uh, because the water is slowly seeping up, that doesn't sound pleasant. It sounds a bit perilous, doesn't it? So uh, let's 
look at our cartograph again. Do we see anything that looks like a, I wonder if this could be the hermit's cave. Um, maybe we've headed in this direction. Maybe we're this way. Um, it's really hard to tell just now. Um, but that's one of the things we're going to be trying to do, is figure out um, what kind of... Uh, oh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts of the games, friend. Uh, it, it has a really vivid illustration. We've got pink and green and white and brown. All conjures an image of the edge of a swamp. The walking has become extremely difficult as your feet sink in the mire with every step. There appears to be a human skeleton hanging on a large tree trunk to the south. So um, anytime you encounter a swamp or a quicksand or anything like that, generally beneficial to save the game. Um, I'm using a traditional save method here, um, but luckily this Apple II emulator does have a, uh, an automatic save state generator that um, you can create using the F11 keys. I'm just taking the traditional mode here with you for authenticity's sake, friends. So uh, let's go and investigate this skeleton. Uh, I love how the render draws it really slowly. You see a grinning skeleton, uh, and then Gorn points warily at a large jeweled ring on its bony finger. Dare we take the ring, friends? Happy Halloween! It's coming up. <laughs> Everyone likes skeletons this time of year. Let's take the ring. Um, and interestingly, it is uh, erased from the photograph, which I think is quite sophisticated uh, for 1983. Um, Gorn thinks the skeleton is, is not worth looking at, so let's leave, and um, should we continue to persist through this, through this um, frightening swamp, let's see what else we can find. <laughs> we see some planks nailed to the tree that read, last chance, go back. We see this violet python strung around the trunk of, a, of the tree. Uh, Foul-smelling gases swirl upwards from the swamp. A large snake lies leisurely coiled around a tree overhead. Um, <laughs> can we talk to the snake? <laughs> no. Um, for now, friends, I think uh, passing under the snake and uh, disobeying these signs that say to go back would be unwise at this level of the adventure. Uh, as you can see here, Gorn drinks from the flask, then passes it to you. So uh, no matter how much we might like to, do, to uh, conserve water, uh, Gorn and I are going to consume water at a, a fairly steady rate every few turns or so. So um, it might be good if we could find a water source pretty soon. Going to continue following this path. Uh, forward through the hills. <laughs> so a few sparse trees are visible to the west. But um, however, we can't go west. Um, this is represented by Gorn telling us, I don't want to go that way. Which is a funny way of dealing with sort of uh, the invisible walls of the game. If we read the map, where might we be where there is a swamp nearby but some trees to the west? It's tough to tell. Um, still working this out, friends. Um, let's continue onward. So again, one of the primary challenges of this particular game is mapping and inventory management. But um, rarely do we see simple mapping and inventory management games illustrated this lavishly. I'm going to continue on west. Uh, the east-west road doesn't look well-traveled. Something to the west is reflecting sunlight, a body of water, perhaps. So note the difference. Even though the graphics for this road were exactly the same as the graphics for the road that led to the swamp, the prose differentiates. Um, this one tells us that there's some probably good water this way and not a scary swamp. I absolutely love this illustration and the way it slow renders, uh, like a Bob Ross painting, uh, the two different shades of blue, uh, the trees, uh, the reflection on the water, and then the clouds in the sky. Wasn't that beautiful, friends? If you were, uh, I know some people keep Lo-Fi Let's Play open in a separate tab as they go about other activities, but I highly recommend going back and looking at, at this again if you can. This is one of my favorite pieces of art in the whole game. Your progress heart halts at the shore of a sparkling blue lake. An old weather-beaten sign is lying by the water's edge. The sign says some of the letters are worn off, but you can still barely make out, um, you know, a sort of missing crypto quote. Um, maybe you could say cast on a line to fish or uh, something else to do with swimming. But um, I'm sure the sign is a warning. Uh, I would reckon it's not a good idea for us to attempt to swim at the minute. I'm going to try to do that before we 
call an end to today. Um, but for now, let's continue to travel, see what else this land has to offer. Um, are you guys, uh, are you folks building a mental map so far um, as I am? It's kind of fun uh, when you're using only four cardinal directions. Oh, we forgot to fill the flask, actually. We have drank from the flask a few times, so I'm going to really quickly return to the lake. Um, if I am indeed correct about returning to the lake, we can uh, just really simply fill the flask. Um, it's a good idea to make sure that um, Gorn never has to go without water, or and that we don't ever have to go without water. Um, let's fill the flask. Flask is filled. Uh, oh, we can go north. Let's see. What is all this? Wow, I've actually not been this way. The forest to the east is too dense for passage. There must be some sort of clearing to the south for the trees are less dense. So we can go north, south, and west. What about west, friends? Another wood. Amazing. <laughs> the trees don't seem quite as dense to the north and west. Um, let's try the west. We found a road through the woods, friends. Amazing. The road runs north and south through the trees. How about south? Every time I play this game, I discover a new area of the map. The forest grows right up to the edge of the road. Um, continue west, following the road. Wow. What have we found, friends? It is a well-kept frame house. I think that it's a safe bet that um, going west would allow us to enter the house. Muffled sounds are barely discernible from within, yet the dark windows reveal nothing. Dare we enter, friends? Um, I don't think so. Let's try to save the game again. Um, before knocking at the door of a mysterious house, I'd like to make sure that we're probably going to be safe first. And we're going to press a key and switch back to the main game disc. Again, this is kind of the old-fashioned way to do it. And... Uh, <laughs> Just to be safe, because I've never actually been here before, this is the first time for me, I'm going to use the um, uh, newfangled way of doing it too. So now we've got two save states to rely upon. Knock. <gasps> wow, did you see that animate and this figure slowly render here? Wow, who's this? The door swings inward silently. A beautiful red-headed woman appears at the threshold, wrapped in a long heavy cloak. Strange and enticing odors waft from the open doorway. After staring briefly at Gorn's hands, she welcomes him into her home. She frowns as you follow Gorn through the doorway, almost as if she only wants to see Gorn, not you. <gasps> wow! Silent as a cat, the woman moves to the other side of the, of the room. Slowly she turns to face you and Gorn. Gorn says, Who are you, woman? Excuse me, Gorn. Wish you could be a bit more progressive. Some call me Lisa. That is what you may call me. Well, hello, Lisa. She says, I could be very useful to you at times and would be willing to accompany you, but it will cost you. Without even a warning, Gorn turns to you, grasps you by the shoulders, lifting you clean off the floor, sets you firmly down outside and closes the door in your face. And so you wait. You know, Gorn, I don't appreciate being left out of these negotiations as I'm the one who's possessed of the sovereigns. Uh, after what seems like ages later, although it couldn't have been more than half, half an hour, Gorn swings open the door. I wonder if this was uh, the sort of adult content that led to this game being the only Penguin software game to be reviewed in Playboy magazine. Jerking his thumb toward the inside, Gorn says, she's coming with us. I had to give her the ring we found, though. Looking a little guilty, Gorn continues, what could I do? She wouldn't accompany us without it. In less time than it takes to spell platitudinarianism, you, Gorn, and your new companion, the beautiful Lisa, are outside of Lisa's house and ready to go. Awesome. Wow, friends. Even though I've played this game um, several times, over and over, I've even done or attempted to do a few different recordings of this game for your benefit. Um, this is the first time... I've actually successfully recruited the Sorceress Lisa, so it just goes to show that even experts like me, friends, can, can make new discoveries so long as you're with me. I'm so happy that, that you're here uh, for this. So let's continue. You, me, and Lisa, uh, continuing onward.
um, south. A slow wind moans softly to the, through the treetops. The forest doesn't seem so dense to the north. Uh, let's continue south again. This is new as well, isn't it, friends? Uh, due west are some crumbled ruins surrounded by dense ve vegetation. The remnants suggest a once great civilization. Interesting. Uh, let's do a save. We can go north, east, or west. Let's go west. And uh, visit these ruins along with our companions Gorn and Lisa. We've gone from being a uh, you know low-ranking advisor to a important part of an adventuring party, don't you think, friends? Piles of crumbled stone lay heaped about the floor. Sunlight trickles in from numerous holes in the roof. Gorn nervously eyes the impenetrable shadows around the ruin walls. Can we trust Lisa, friends? What do you think? So we uh, pursue further into the ruins. This room seems to have been recently occupied. A flight of worn stairs that look centuries old lead down into utter darkness. <gasps> what appears? Oh my goodness, look at these little green shapes that are rendering. Uh, suddenly lizard men leap from the shadows and come charging toward you. In a blur of speed, Gorn unsheaths his sword and prepares to meet the challenge. What's it to be, chief? Run or fight? The lizard men halt their forward rush as Lisa's ornate staff begins to glow brightly. The light thickens until it becomes a horrendous fireball that launches itself at the lizard men, obliterating them completely. Wow, friends, I think it was a good idea to bring Lisa along. Uh, and there is a sword visible. Let's take the sword. Uh, we have a new sword, and the word Dragonbane is inscribed. Wow, we even get a great... Uh, illustration of Gorn, our companion and parser, uh, wielding the sword. Isn't this fascinating, friends? I'm having a wonderful time. Um, when I was a kid, I used to kind of drag my friends along to play adventure games with me. And uh, every new discovery that I would make was more fun for the fact that I had uh, pals with me and, and assistants to help me solve the puzzles. And uh, thank you for being those folks for me today. Um, let's say we light our lantern before we proceed and uh it's always good to save the game before you uh well I've, I've done the unconventional save so let's go down with our lit lantern suddenly the ground begins to tremble and a great rumbling voice saith please turneth thy diskette over and thanks to the magic of emulation uh we can do that um I think it's kind of funny that um, Mr. Dallas Snell chose to give his parser the voice of a barbarian warrior champion and the uh, voice of the system itself, a sort of supernatural godly tone. We've turned our disc over and now we find ourselves uh, a dark tunnel passage that stretches to the west. Wow, look at this, this is amazing. It continues on straight, uh, which would, would mean that we continue to go west. Uh, continuing on through the darkness, Wow, I wonder what the, uh... oh no, <laughs> Gorn drinks from the, the flask and passes it to Lisa who drinks and she passes it to you. So now we have even more um, companions to support with a single flask. That seems to make it only more urgent that we find a water source as we uh, persist through this um, perilous and long tunnel. Straight and straight and straight. I hope we have enough water, friends. We've gone from uh, finding a magical sword to recruiting a new companion to uh, persisting str straight through a, a dark and mysterious tunnel. Really concerned, aren't you? Although the graphics are varying slightly, so it's safe to assume that uh, we're not stuck in a, in a maze. Um, oh, more drinking out of the flask. Do you think we should turn back, friends? <laughs> we find ourselves at... Uh, an interesting decision point, don't we? Um, <laughs> and I think actually we're sort of coming to the end of our traditional um, time allocation for lo-fi let's play. Up oh, and right when all seemed lost. The tunnel makes a sharp turn for, to the right, so let's follow it around. Look at these <laughs> beautiful winding turns. Uh, it requires you to often check the, uh, the visible exit. The dank tunnel breaches to the right. Well, I love me a dank tunnel, don't you, friends? Let's see. <laughs> Took the right. Um, it's a little bit of a maze, but uh, basically able to keep track. 
tunnel makes a sharp turn to the right to continue on east. Following this unusual maze, continue going east. I hope that we find the way out before we uh, run our flask out, don't you, friends? Very, very uh, tense moment right now. Following this tunnel, you, me, and Lisa and our limited water supply. What good does it do, friends, if we found the mighty dragon's bane sword, if we never survived these underground caverns? Wow. You know, there's all kinds of shapes that mazes in the early 80s could take. Some of them are random. Some of them require a certain amount of skill and intuition, the sort of, you know, following your rightmost wall methodology, which is what I tend to do. Uh, again, we drink from our flask. Um, I suspect that this is a sort of puzzle um, through which there is only one right answer and uh, the unwary adventurer will expend their flask um, before the right solution appears. Um, let's bravely persist just a little more upward. Wow, so looks like we've made it out. We're going to turn the disc over. I can't leave you now, friends, and you can't leave me, can you? Let's turn the disc over. Ha! Somehow we found our way back into the recently occupied room. Um, so I think uh, for now this is a good place for us to pause. Um, if you'd like to try this game for yourself, you want to download um, Apple II Plus Emulator or um, Enhanced Apple IIe Emulator for, for Windows. Um, any version will work. Um, thanks to the tireless work of archivists, um, these emulators are pretty uh, readily available. I really recommend them. Um, if you're looking for some further spaces to make donations to, um, my colleague Jason Scott works tirelessly beha on behalf of the Internet Archive. And without the availability of manuals, walkthroughs, and, 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 and disk images, um, my work would not be possible. Uh, similarly, my work would not be possible without the uh, backing of my generous friends on Patreon. Uh, if you want to be one of them, you can go to patreon.com slash Alexander. A lot of my posts and further information about the Lo-Fi Let's Play project uh, lives there. Um, and you can subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel, which is Lee Alexander one um, And I hope you're enjoying Lo-Fi Let's Play. I really am too, and I'm, I'm so grateful uh, to have the opportunity to do it. And... Um, Please expect more updates about um, what's coming next um, soon. There's a lot of exciting stuff around the corner. I don't even know what to choose next. Thank you so much for your time today, friends. If you do get to try out the quest for, for yourself, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, it's LeeAlexander1 at gmail.com or at my Twitter, which is at LeeAlexander. Thank you so much, friends, and uh, hope you are having uh, wonderful adventures yourselves this time of year. Bye-bye.